Welcome to Tech at Lunch, the podcast that satisfies your hunger for all things tech while you enjoy your midday meal. So grab your sandwich, tune in, and let's dig in. Hello, I'm Nick. Hello, I'm Ed. Hey, I'm John. And you know, this week we're going to um, kind of continue down the uh, filament path. You know, last week we kind of talked about intermediate filaments, and uh, this week we're going to talk about our, our advanced filaments. We're also going to get into the recycling of those filaments and also the um, uh, sustainability of each of those. Um, like I, you know, I, I did bring up last week that, you know, if I got my hands on some polypropylene, I would mm. give it a, 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 a thorough, or give it a review, or at least an attempt print to kind of see what happens. Um, well, it was definitely an attempt print, I'll tell you that. Um, we try. I tried it. Um, I printed on a Ender, a stock Ender three, um, which that shows you can print on on other stuff on, on on what you can, using a polypropylene sheet on the bed that came with the filament, by the way, and um, you know was able to print a uh, have you know, got first layer stick, um, and was able to print a benchy. Was it very good benchy? No. But was the benchy itself? Yes. Um, you can tell. Yeah. What, what, what temperatures are you putting now? What's what's your settings on it? Right? Oh, let's see. I, I texted to you the other day. So oh, we'll yeah, you're right. Message. Well, I'm going to be honest. We talked about um, 235 nozzle and 90 bed temp. That's what it is. Okay. It wasn't nothing crazy. It was right about what you would print ABS at. So mm-hmm. the printers are capable of doing it. And I also ran no enclosure. And I had no lift issues. Yeah. So I did run a brim, like it, like, you know, some places said, you know, um, uh, and, uh, you know, tried it that way. I, the one thing I do need to work on is that stuff is very uh, slick. So the extrusion is a little is, is a little weird. So I got to, you know, really get into the extrusion factor. Yeah. Um, and kind of see what that is. I actually turned it up to um, 110% extrusion factor. You um, just doing that in the front of the clipper? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to try to get it, you know, to extrude more. To see if I can over, I could take over the, uh, the extrusion issues, and yeah, that kind of didn't work. Um, didn't yeah, fail, but I'm it didn't be work. Honest, I don't, I don't like that that feature in Clipper yet. I, I feel like it's, I mean, it's it's doing some calculations and it's trying to input to your flow rate, and it's, mm. to me, I think that that's the wrong place to calculate your flow rate. Yeah. If you're if you're wanting an extrusion factor, I mean, in that sense, that it almost feels like it's trying to push more. It's like a a multiplier, That's you know what, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it's your, multiplier. because instead of a <clears throat> instead of actual flow rate, like kind of, um, I think about it as like a fine a fine knob and a coarse knob. Like if you were ever this is for you, Ed, working with an oscilloscope, <laughs> you got the you got the coarse and you've got the fine. You can adjust these wavelengths and certain mm-hmm. frequencies and things. I, I I view it like that. If if you go into Clipper and you do rotational distance calculations. Which is we, we've talked. I think we talked about it before. Where you mark a hundred, you mark, you measure a hundred on the filament, and you mark it, and then measure fifty more behind that, mark it, and tell it to extrude a hundred, and then see however much it goes above or below. If it goes above one hundred fifty, you're gonna have to do you know an mm-hmm. extra hundred in front of that. But you can see how far below, uh, above or below, and then do your factor off of that. If you can change the rotation distance of the uh, the actual gear of the extruder, I mean, in my eyes. Yeah. It, it helps me with my prints, but again, you you can ask me how I've gotten poly, I've gotten polypropylene pro, polycarbonate to uh, print at all. So it's it's what I am going to try to do because I'm kind of curious. Curiosity killed the cat, and this yeah. is something that we start getting like intermediate filaments. You got to really start thinking about, and you know, that's also something we start getting uh, you know advanced filaments. Is I went off of a blind faith off of whatever everybody else said on temps. I need to run a temp tower. So I think I'm gonna. Run a, I think that's the next that's thing I'm gonna run idea. is run a temp tower on it, kind of see exactly what it likes because it may have not been an extrusion issue. It might have been a temp issue. I think. I think so. I mean, honestly, that's that's the that's the thing I I think about is, uh, like we we were talk we've been talking about it like pretty much all night. It, 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 not having a heated enclosure versus having a heated enclosure, things like that. Mm-hmm. Drafts. Like I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I haven't had a parts fan or a parts cooling fan on my printers in months 
Yeah. And you know what I noticed from it? I get warpage, so mm-hmm. I have to do some earmuffs or, or a raft or a brim. Yeah. I mean, I get those things and those issues, or I don't get polycarbonate to, 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 to stick. Mm-hmm. But these are the things that you give up with a lot of that. If you introduce part, uh, part cooling, you could cause warpage. Yeah, I do part it's cooling really on, poly, on polypropylene after layer four. After the fourth layer? Okay. So after fourth layer with a brim on it. The brim doesn't really stick. It like sticks after like the fourth or fifth layer of the rim. I'm gonna um, be honest with you. I don't that. do a ten. I don't do a ten brim. Um, for some of us who like uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 brims. Hey, no, the first few <laughs> brims are so you can ensure your bed level. If you can adjust the the things. What's the other thirty and, for? <laughs> uh, because you need to make sure <laughs> you have to let it go around a few more times. Oh, yeah. I want to go back to something you were saying. So. Consistency is what you're looking for. So flow rate, and from my background from working in a paint shop. We tested flow rate by flowing so much uh, um, fluid for a certain amount of time to get a certain amount of uh, liters or milliliters. Mm -hmm. And those milliliters was uh, what we would measure, you know, to say, well, hey, it was this amount of flow in this amount of time. So when we're talking flow rate, um, so let's think about like the melt flow index. So basically... If we had a constant force supplied, a temperature held constant, and then, you know, that's based off a heater, and we had test plastic, and we extruded that uh, material and collected it after 10 minutes and weighed it, then that actually should give you a true flow rate. No, yeah, you can, mm-hmm. no, that's, that's, that's actually good. That's a good, that's a good way to do it, too. You, you extrude yeah. it out, you know, expected versus a- actual, and then kind of do your calculations and try to adjust. Right. And then you can also, okay, hey, I did this test, mm-hmm. and this is just a line of fluid flow, mm-hmm. no restriction. Mm-hmm. So now you have to say, well, ask yourself, if I start to apply this, and I wanted to um, measure this in a grid in, say, six uh, cubes, and I don't care about the cube far as yeah. uh, if it's symmetrical or anything. All I care about is weight mm-hmm. and how much time it took to make that cube. So you would, I'm, I'm saying the cube should be within that same amount of time that you figured out your flow rate from uh, allowing the material to cool for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In theory, you could also then kind of verify your flow rate by either doing one cube and see if that cube matched the same weight mm-hmm. for that, uh, that amount of time that you did. The flow rate with just letting gravity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then from there, you should be able to take that and figure out the consistency. And if you were suspecting that something in the bed had some deviations, that's when you did the, the pattern on the bed yeah, to weigh each of those cues to verify. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> like, so so, I think all of these are great, like, tests for, you know. Well, I'm just saying, if exact, we're just doing but, testing, not, not hey, validation this is. And, and all that. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it's it's one thing, because we're talking, This is, the reason we're getting into the testing and validation and flow rate and talking about all this yeah. thing, you started off with just talking about your experience with it, but it's 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 really, we we're talking about advanced filaments, so polypropylene, I, I just want to kind of lay down a baseline of a few mm-hmm. a few materials, right? We're, we're talking about polypropylene, uh, polycarbonate, uh, nylon, mm-hmm. things like that nature, things of that nature, which are still kind of printable, more of an, less so of an industrial kind of environment, more mm-hmm. so you're you're still kind of in a desktop range. But the, uh, it's it's like pretty much once you've figured out how to work with ABS ASA, these are filaments that are similar right. because they're high resistance, uh, are high impact resistance, mm-hmm. high heat resistance. <clears throat> Um, after they cool, and these are the reasons why we're using them. Not only are you know polypropylene's uh, food safe, you know, right. so exactly. so that's that's one of the things. Like these, Print these, forks. it's it's we're we're printing and we're trying to get to that level because it's um, it's their greater materials, greater features, more value, more benefit, right? right. Um, and all of these things that we're talking about are have to be so precise because the they're so finicky. Yeah. They 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 you can have a, a small draft of wind. And you have a layer separation. You could not have used the right bed and didn't realize it. It prints. It sticks to itself. So now you have a problem there. You may not have put an activator on the print bed. And now, and like yeah. uh, I was, I was kind of looking up uh, some some hints and tips on polycarbonate. And they recommended a polycarbonate uh, cutting board. But if you don't put an activator to remove it after mm-hmm. your print's done, you have a polycarbonate mm-hmm. cutting board fused to your print. So it's like. Makes sense. Yeah. 
like so you got these are things that like yeah. you would have learned already mm-hmm. if you had been printing with you know uh, yeah. PLA PETG ABS yeah. um, even on into the, the pluses of those that's so. why they say the polypropylene stuff speaking of like confusing to itself yeah because you print on it but they say remove it when it's still hot you need it, to it, it, if not it becomes one with itself yeah. um, you know you're gonna <coughs> I, I, I think like with all those materials like I I think like say <clears throat> even when we talk materials and just just for a second to deviate a little bit when we talk aluminum and we talk titanium both have their benefits because of the light weight of them, mm-hmm. and both have their benefits because of the, the, the structure of the materials. One is Impact one is one is stronger distance. than the other. Yeah. One has some some characteristics as far as heat dissipation over they, the other. They even get down to crush yeah. crush uh, right. pressure, all that forces and everything. Like, like night core. Uh, so yeah, I yeah. I think like a lot of times we're like. Um, when a, when a painter takes medium and he mm-hmm. just you know starts blobbing paint on the on the canvas, mm-hmm. and you say, oh okay, okay this works, and then he said, well, let me blend this color together and do this. I think a lot of time with desktop printing, that's what we do. Yeah, mm-hmm. we kind of just mesh techniques together. Mm-hmm. But I think if you approached it from a scientific point of view, you would know what your failure points would be for each material because you would have did a battery of tests to verify the characteristics of that particular material mm-hmm. per mm-hmm. because it's the same as is paint right per uh, roll or per wh- whatever however you receive it that right. that yeah. that filament you would have to uh say well okay i did enough tests on this and i know that this is the behavior or the characteristics of this particular type of material for this particular role they get to put i think we're i think we're all kind of all of these things get put into what's called like dimensional accuracy or, or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we, we hear that when we or sorry we see that in the titles like if you're on amazon looking up your prints you're like oh okay this is 1.75 millimeter diameter all right oh it's co-extruded okay there's two colors in there mm-hmm. all right okay and so you're looking at all these things and this is in those in those um settings is where you notice a lot of those little details and what you mm-hmm. should print which how you should print uh, sometimes they even put the temperatures and stuff in in the name of it. So yeah. mm-hmm. these these are things that must have been considered by the manufacturer already. I mean, there's a reason why they put the temperature ranges, but like it's never going to be perfect. I mean, you talked about making a temp tower. Mm-hmm. You talked about how many other tests have you already done? You made the Benchy, you, you yeah. made the first yeah. layer tests, right? Uh, so but these the, these are things. How that accurate is the Benchy? The Benchy is basically a visual thing. Well, it's, it's, it's it's not it's not accurate. Like I can take and do dimensional <clears throat> testing on it because the of the size of the Benchy. Mm-hmm. Because of the diameter, because of the actual dimensional tolerance of a benchy, mm-hmm. it is not something that you can take and say, "Hey, I want to take this and and measure this where I actually touch probes to it and get some <coughs> metrics from it." I think the, you know. I mean, most, I, I think you can. Yeah. No, I think I think the no, benchy. I, I guarantee you. If we I think took, if I took an STL and when I slice it and it has a measurement on it and I measure what the what the print comes out to, I can t- I can tell a difference. You you have overhangs. You have Tiny movements of your No, printer. we're not talking about visual things. I'm saying if I want to measure the dimensionals of a benchy, like anything that you measure, when people measure, yeah. they don't look, they don't use this type of shape. They they use gauge blocks or something like that to say, hey, I know that this is the layer, yeah, using the height view. of this layer. Yeah. I'm saying the benchy, of course I can take the benchy and verify my STL. Well, so you don't know like... Five hundred layers. Yeah, and that's, but but it's, you're it's right like now. You, so layer. I mean, there's so there's you're absolutely testing, right yeah. about the Benchy from that aspect. Hey, this is what the STLs say, and this is the deviation from the STL. Mm-hmm. That's that's a hundred percent. Right. It, it's not like using an XYZ cube. Um, yeah. You know, X, XYZ I mean, cubes. Yeah, are, are it's harder different. to calculate. I guess yeah. I would say too. But XYZ cubes are mostly based on your printer. Um, and what the thing is is the reason why I use a Benchy usually the first print that I do. If I get into stick, it's usually either going to be a bench or a temp tower, so I can mm-hmm. see what's going on. Um, I didn't run a temp tower because I was like, you know what? I just got this stuff in the mail. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to. I'm going to rip it, stick it, see what happens. A little happens. anxious. I get it. Um, I do it too. Uh, you know, just to see what happens. And yeah. the thing is, the benchy also tells me, okay, cool. What are, what's the what's the overhang capability of this filament? Yeah. Um, so, and the thing is, is if you look at a benchy for with polypropylene in it. The overhangs are great. Mm-hmm. I mean, they you know it's not bad for an Ender Free. You know, you know bare bones, bare stock for an Ender Free. But the thing is, it kind of shows you that okay, cool. Now I know you got to slow some stuff down, and your your overhangs are good. Your 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 walling is is decent. Um, so then you can go into do your temp tower, 
and then I'll probably do a temp tower and then rerun another benchy to see kind of, you know, at the temp that it recommends and just see what kind of pops out there to see if it right. actually improves the quality. Benchies are great to tell if you have a quality issue going on, if you have a flow rate issue going on, if you have an overhang issue going on. Uh-huh. It's a good way to test your filaments if you have an overhang. If you if if you know you're going to be bridging yeah. and overhanging with a particular filament, a benchy is a great tool to see. Uh, you know, I'm not saying go in, out and do one of those torture test racks. You know, that does everything every time you get a film. Yeah. You're just wasting film at that point. Yeah. Run a bench, you have some fun with it, throw it on, on, up, on, up on a stand someplace. Right. Um, so, so to be fair, just so I, I I clarify what I mean by the bench, so uh, the, the bench, exactly what you're saying, is like a first part release. It's yeah. it's it's doing multiple tests in one visual mm-hmm. print that Stringing you can them say. Yeah. yeah. So to, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, I'm, but I'm just saying like from... If we're being scientific about it, where mm-hmm. I want to know, like, say, the manufacturer that make these printers. Overhangs and things like I'm that. I'm assuming that they're rate. doing some type of dimensional testing where they know that with this material, I get this layer build. Hmm. I, I'm assuming they have to with the, the hot oh, end, we, the nozzles, so and all those things. We've, that I think they, we've talked about yeah. uh, the, the pyramid before. You, you mentioned it last yeah. time, last week where we talked about... Like uh, we didn't get, I guess we didn't get into too much detail with it. The, the filament but, pyramid, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. the filament pyramid where we, I mean, it kind of breaks it down how we're breaking it down with the with some of the series mm-hmm. here. But mm-hmm. um, to be honest with you, um, I, so I did look up because I was curious. We looked up amorphous um, that that day, and it's no structure, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, so lack of structure, and then there's crest, the, the crystalline, crystalline or yeah. semi crystalline. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, I mean, I think it breaks down on that level too. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. if it's amorphous. Um, more of those materials are actually more impact resistant because they don't have a set structure and they can mm-hmm. kind of dissipate the energy that yeah, they break structure a little different. Yeah, so I, I mean, honestly, in, in my eyes, I think a lot of that is ha, is affected by um, uh, kind of the, the properties that you're saying, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 of course, I think the manufacturer has to take that into a, uh, into account. I don't see how they can't. Because I'm thinking that they're trying to give you something that has a window mm-hmm. that, that for even a novice to an advanced person, mm-hmm. that they give you enough of a window that that novice can fall somewhere in that range and the advanced person can either fall into that range or go a little bit outside that range. Right, a little right. bit tweaking to get there. Right. You know, and the thing is, is everybody built these printers to be, you know, tweakable, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. You know, not everybody is going to be building you know, equipment off of their printers that is be able to be used in a manufacturing mm-hmm. environment, for example. Right, that's correct. You know, I'm not, not I'm not going to buy an Ender because I want to run nylon pucks to, mm-hmm. you know, to shim a, you know, a, a station that I need to, that I need to do. Yeah, that's true. I think um, I have to challenge. Yeah. That's no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but that's, I mean, I'm that's, just that's I'm fair. just kidding. If you I want mean, to take the challenge, I don't want to, I don't want to, I got to finish um, calling the um, carpenter first. I got to get that to, yeah, well, we got to get that to stick. I mean, just, just, I, I get some of the application with nylon. More than a ball. <laughs> it's, uh, some people have parts on their, on their car that in the third, you know, in the aftermarket or, yeah. you know, if you go to the OEMM, they very expensive Mm -hmm. and in some cases you can actually design the part better because it's not a process that they're trying to spit out a million of these things exactly right and you can actually maybe dial this thing in to get rid of an engineering flaw look at the guys that are going to SEMA it's true okay I'm a big car nut you know how we work in automotive you can't be you cannot be a car nut working automotive Mm -hmm. Um, it just doesn't happen that way but like I'm a SEMA fan too. Mm-hmm. I am a huge fan of the SEMA show. I'm a huge fan of what goes on behind the SEMA movement. You know, oh, the oh, automotive aftermarket. Mm-hmm. I love the automotive aftermarket. It's probably why I bought diesel. Um, but there's guys out there who are using advanced manufacturing techniques, like you said, to, to, to fix the flaws. But they're using large format printers to print the base layers of like a like a like a um, a body kit. They're taking those those layers and using them as a mold before they pop the mold out and paint. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got guys out there who are building entire cars, Pretty smart, out of three D printers or yeah. doing things with three D printers to do this. I, you know, and the thing is, is more you start getting from like ABS on, you're really not going to see anybody really building a bumper out of PLA. Um, no. If you do, that might be a little bit hilarious. Well, it'll last you a week. Yeah. Give it a look. Yeah. You hit, you're going to hit one bump, and it's going to pop in. You're going right. to run it over. Right. So, <laughs> the thing is, That's it. is ABS on, I think, is is like SEMA level, you know. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, uh, ABS, materials. ABS is more the temperature resistance. Like, we talked, right. I think we've talked about. And, and impact. Yeah, it's impact. probably one of the strongest 
affordable materials that you can use. Right, exactly. And I mean, uh, I would say, um, so for polycarbonate, I, I, I tried to print, I think, at 280. Um, I mean, most printers, most of the enders should should be able to print up to 250 ish. Mm -hmm. So you might need a new, you might need to do some tinkering in the firmware and things like that. You might need to get a new hot end or, or a micro Swiss if you want to go with it. I think they're one of the cheaper options. Um, but you honestly need to be able to like main. I think the biggest thing is maintaining the temperature mm -hmm. because we talk about hitting the temperature. I mean, I look at I look at the clipper uh, readings, and this is how I this is how I knew my problem was my, with my thermistor, mm -hmm. is that I would see drops of fifteen to twenty degrees in the thermistor mm -hmm. uh, of of the hot end, but the print was fine. There's no artifacting or any mm -hmm. issues like that. Mm -hmm. But maybe it did drop that much. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a, a connection issue, or maybe it's the the wire itself, or maybe the heating element, the heating cartridge is is gone bad. So I replaced all mm -hmm. of that stuff. And it's more, it's it's been more stable than mm -hmm. than ever before. Mm -hmm. However, I don't have the p or the polycarbonate bed, so yeah. it didn't stick to itself. Mm -hmm. But these are, it's, it's like these are, there's like twenty to thirty things that you need to double check mm -hmm. yeah, before you can print it at the at the advanced level. I would say. And I think once we start getting into the advanced filaments, we start getting into your nylons, your nylon X's, um, mm -hmm. more of the. Um, there are even carbon fiber yeah, used yeah. Of, uh, of a lot of the nylon, a lot of the polycarbonate. Um, yeah. They, 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 put, they pretty much try to put carbon fiber in anything. I mean, to, I'll, to be honest with you, I looked up, I was just curious, I looked up what polycarbonate, what's made out of polycarbonate. Mm -hmm. Bulletproof glass, yeah. mm -hmm. drone parts, RC car uh, parts, um, a lot of those things. I mean, because the impact resistance, I mean, right. they don't have to, we're not heating these things, mm -hmm. right? So it's more of the impact it resistance we're going for. So. But it's like you start getting into like these non because I don't know if you'd really call like nylon more like an engineering film at that point. It pretty much is. Um, I would say it toes the line. It, it's like a heat resistant, heat resistant, you know, a little bit of heat resistant nylon if you could find it. Um, it's just but the thing is, is also remember when you start printing these advanced filaments, your price per kilo goes nuts. Like you're buying seven hundred grams of filament for freaking like. 60 bucks. Oh, yeah, and it's doing a number on your equipment. Yeah, it is going to eat your stuff alive. You um, have to heat it to higher temperatures. It's, it's, yeah. it's hard to keep sustainable. You're, you're going to have some printers that are being gassed. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is if you build out your printer that can, or buy a printer that can handle these higher level filaments, you can easily well and exceed half, yeah. the, half the stuff they tell you mm -hmm. without having an issue. So do you think that... Um, for example, the heating element that you use in iron is is an AC base mm -hmm. element. So what that means is is that it it can work at a uh, higher temperature range, as opposed to I believe there is a limit to what you can do with the uh, desktops when it comes to heating. Voltage. Um, there there are options where you can use uh, solid state relays and things like that, mm -hmm. and you can actually you know, you do some uh, pulse with some modulation and get better control over the, how you do the, the heating. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can probably get more, you can probably get close to 500 degrees with within, I would say, an industrial heating uh, element. My Voron runs off of solid state relay. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a solid state relay in it. The only thing holding it back really is the thermistor and the hot end. Mm -hmm. um, that will soon be going away of the bedside. Um, but you know, the thing is you have some of these printers that you can build out and stuff like that, that they're open source, open build platforms that are capable of hitting that 500 degree, mm -hmm. you know, mark. Will I recommend printing 500 degrees centigrade in your house? No. No. Yeah, not um, in, no, don't do that. Please, if, if you're going to print like that and you want to print it in your house, have a fire extinguisher. Uh, put it in your garage. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't inhale. <laughs> in, in the middle of your garage, please, away from anything that's possibly do combustible. Do it at your friend's house. <laughs> because if you're at 500 degrees centigrade, your bed has got to be somewhere close to that. Yeah. And if you touch that, you're going to scold yourself, fans, friends, the cat. Um, uh, you won't feel you know, it. You, you don't know you burnt them until it's yeah. way too late. And next thing you got a cat with a bald spot. You know, yeah. it's John doesn't want that. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> well, think more like a, a, a kiln. Be, you know, the people that have kilns, kilns yeah. in their yeah, their garage or whatever, yeah. and those type of applications. Yeah, you're right. That's that's 
place somewhere, and normally that's not a 120 device. That's normally yeah. something that's operating around uh, two, 220, 220, 240, yeah. or... It could be even industrial boats, just like 480 yeah. boats, three phase. It it's depends. like your, your forges all run off of propane. Yeah. You know, so th- th- mm-hmm. that th- you are right about you know, yes, you can you can uh, do those type of things, but there's a lot of uh, safety to get that's involved yeah. with that. There uh, there are thermal um, switches and uh, one time fuses. That basically, if the temperature mm-hmm. get a certain amount, it it opens and that circuit is is That's done. That's what mine's got one on there. You know, yeah. so to keep from uh, thermal runaway, mm-hmm. um, they also they also use like uh, uh, cement. That's that's made for refractory, mm-hmm. you know. So this this is something like when we're talking about going to those temperatures, this wow. is probably not something you want to just put on top of yeah. your. Your yeah. bench and, and say, hey, I want to try to go as hot as I can go. Yeah, it's a, be, be very careful with that. We'll, we'll throw the disclaimer there. Don't be stupid. Um, very big simple. Big warning. Very, very, very straight to the big point. Big warning. Don't be stupid. Um, be smart about it. Have fun with it. If you want to try nylon, um, go right ahead. You know, eventually I want to try it on the Voron. I think it, I think it'd work. Um, it'd be a very expensive attempt. Um, and if I attempt it wrong, ooh, there's some fun stuff I got. Um. But the thing is, is I understand my level of stupidity. Um, I am well aware of that. Um, my stupid has no bounds. Um, yeah, I mean, some people call me smart and stupid, but yeah. well, worth a shot, though, right? I mean, yeah, it's worth it a go for. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll, you know, pr- you know, do it for the doctor and you know, try yeah. to prove, you know, how dumb can you get before you actually figure out what film you can't print. And then something else, <laughs> anything can be printed. <laughs> something else also maybe to keep in right. mind is like torch. <laughs> 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 uh, with the ad, with the advance uh, filament, uh, <laughs> uh, be aware that they do off gas. Yes, the yes. polypropylene off gases too, and boy, does it stink. Yeah, you need mm-hmm. to uh, like you gotta be careful. We gotta have some um, some ventilation if it's constantly running. You you need to, some type of system. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we didn't really get into the, the sustainability as much just yet, but like if we if we were to touch on just the, the sustainability of your life, the printer, the person who's printing, um, yeah, that's yeah, bad. You can't recycle that. Don't don't. Well, you can, but I mean, don't inhale that that air. But that's the thing is. Video is now we start getting into the filaments of where enclosure and ventilation systems almost are kind of required. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I know nobody really... Putting outside, I don't know. Right. Mean, yeah, <laughs> even, even still then, you know. Shed. Yeah, that's I true. I mean, how much of that you want to do? That's yeah. true. But the thing is, is, you know, don't be around, you know, inhaling freaking, you know, n- uh, nylon fumes. Yeah. You know, God knows what that, what that is. Yep. You know? Um, it's not good for you. No, it can't be. And the thing is, that you guys, some you know, we have some people out there who get headaches from when they're 3D printing. It's because of the VOCs. As you start getting into the more advanced filaments, the higher temperature stuff, you're going to start getting into those VOCs being released more and more and more and more. It's not just it smells like straight up freaking, you know, rotten eggs or plastic. Yeah. You know, it's because of the fact that you're releasing VOCs. The VOCs are harmful to you and they're actively hurting you. And be aware that you could get the attention of some agency if your footprint gets to a certain certain size yeah and you're releasing VOCs incorrectly yeah, yeah there you go yeah certain agencies <laughs> yeah very, very very I'm just saying be aware of that I yeah. mean you know if you got a print phone with two or three hundred printers yeah, and you you're in an industrial environment yeah you, know. <laughs> you, you know. might want to have a system in place to uh yeah. if you're on a two or three hundred printers and you're doing that in your garage please send us a picture because I'm kind of curious um so but you know, that's the industrial side of the house, man. You, you, we've seen the printers. We saw them at, um, uh, at the shows and stuff like that. They're industrial little things. Yeah. Man. They are. They have filters in those things that make the fil- the filters in your house look like child's play. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're, they're you know, it's hypo, it's the hy- what, hypoallergenic filters. Yeah. Hepa, they're, hepa. Hepa filters. Hepa. Hepa. They're running like three or four of those. And they say the air is cleaner leaving the printer than it was coming in. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I can see that because you know those the the filtering agents mm-hmm. can be made to filter for a certain um, chemical compound. Yeah, you know, charcoal. I mean, I mean and stuff yeah, like that. you can get it to dial charcoal. in as you want it. Yeah, yeah activated charcoal is one of them. Um, you know, you don't like you can put activated charcoal, you know, in a pack and stuff like that, and sit in your printer and your in your enclosure and it'll absorb it. Um, 
I think you should. Yeah, you should have charcoal around. Period. I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a it's a good it's a good idea because it, even if you're using a resin printer, like it it'll absorb a lot of that. Yeah, resin so, is like really aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's hard to even be. I have to like I have so I have another, now I have a room for it instead of a closet. Yeah. So I, I literally have to like. Uh, uh, I have the air purifiers and it has activated charcoal wires, and I have to do that. But yeah. still, you can kind of smell it when you walk in. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you probably that is probably as close to to say like a paint shop environment. Yeah. Yeah. That that uh, than any other process you mm-hmm. use. Yeah. It, it's like I've seen. You know, I've right. seen some people talk about the fact that when they in they're building these industrial filaments you know or, or you know printing with these industrial filaments like nylon and nylon x and stuff like that the the additive side of the house sustainability wise for the the higher end filaments really doesn't exist um i don't think i don't think there's a way to recycle nylon um at least not as well, of right now i would say probably it's not a convert a commercial unless it's recycled back on vi- itself viable way of recycling nylon right. that somebody is willing to do right I, i'm assuming unless it's uranium enriched something anything can be recycled <laughs> but is the yeah. economic is it economically feasible to put that right. amount of effort into recycling there's always a way to recycle old filament yeah you know nylon is probably not you know yeah i'm assuming it's pretty costly. You know, we, we have fishy filaments who is making nylon freaking filament yeah. from uh uh fishnet fishnets yeah it was actually pretty cool. Um, well, I'm assuming then they, they might have a way to make some filament. Then yeah. they probably but it's the, way, but the, it's expensive. The fishnet is probably more virgin material. No, it's straight out of the ocean. Know what I mean? Like, um, like maybe the composition that they use for is nylon printing in a a 3D printing environment is different because maybe the way that they make that the the netting is is different. Mm-hmm. As opposed to like a spool or something, maybe they add some things to that to make it more, yeah, blue, make it more fluidity. I guess yeah. you would say. Makes sense. Viscous. 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 Yeah. Viscosity. Yeah. yeah. The college word for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're using high, high, higher yep. energy. Yeah. yeah. Higher energy. But no, Good job. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it, it's one of those. Don't ask me to spell. <laughs> no, 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 but but I'm saying like I, I maybe Sorry. maybe it's, maybe it could be something as, as simple as that. Maybe it's that. The composition of that nylon is different yeah. from the comp- yeah. composition. Because I'm assuming true. the composition of the nylon that we put in water, where it can it get into the drinking water or get into the water table, yeah, right. it has to be like, you know, neutral. Yeah, it has to be a neutral pH, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 it's weird because if you think about it. Well, wait, wait a minute. Not neutral pH. Not, yeah, not pH. What, what do you, what's the, what's the technical term? What's the college term? What do you mean for 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 like when something is parts per whatever? No, no like straight when, neutral. When it's neutral, wait on a minute. the pH. Well, you remember it in a minute. No, yeah. it's not the pH. It's like it's like if I if I'm doing chemistry and I have a base and I have an acid charge. This, this thing here is like neutral. Dang, I can't. But anyway, we'll we'll get to it. Right. You're you're we'll, we'll get to the end and you'll be like, oh yeah, I know what you're nah. talking about. But yeah, go <laughs> yeah, ahead. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like. You know, nylon is, is, is one of those filaments. And the thing is, I keep harping on nylon because nylon is probably much your most well-known advanced filament out there right now. Um, it, it's just the fact is, I, you know, there might be some people that are recycling it, maybe not a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, probably recycling it to the trash can. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Equilibrium. <laughs> No. Yeah, 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 some more. No. Um, it, he's over it, here you're thinking about close. it. You got you're me. Getting, you no, got you're getting closer. <laughs> yeah. uh, you got me thinking. staring at me like a, squirrel. Squirrel. Like, a, like a cat just stole squirrel. a freaking little, you know, okay, meat, I got, meat yeah, jar. Like, now I'm trying to solve something. Oh, um, okay. You know, he's over here doing math. Is he pop the <laughs> um, if you smell burnt toast, send help. <laughs> <laughs> we might laugh at you a little bit. Um, oh. If you think you need a thing less, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, it's not impossible. It, it's just the fact is, it's you know, if somebody out there is doing it, let us know. However, if you're printing with nylon, Jesus Christ, um, you know, make sure you have film, make sure yeah. you have your, um, uh, all of your your ventilation, and you know, you're able to work with it. Yeah. By this point, I I'd hope you you understand so much about like the the temp towers and the changes of that temperature and 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 kind of already thought about controlling the atmosphere of the, like, not just the enclosure but the print room so right i would hope 
if you're getting to that level, you, you've you've done those things. If you're gonna get a successful print at all, yeah. If your prints are one Taco Bell visit away from being incomplete, mm. um, yeah. please re- re- please rethink about you'd what be, you're doing. You'd be careful with it, man. <laughs> but, I mean, because like these temperatures you're printing that are gonna be they're they're so hot. Like you you have to have almost a contingency plan on if yeah, it's straight you have through. a thermal runaway or, or something like that. Yeah. Like if you're not preparing, then I mean, honestly, your your whole printer could be, be gone just because you wanted to get fancy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Which which make which kind of makes me wonder is you know once we start getting these higher end th- printers, I think we saw some at Rapid that did have them in there, which were on board um, fire extinguisher systems, yeah, and foam cannons, that, but that they're built inside the printer. Did you find the word? Ah, okay. Maybe, maybe there. I haven't heard. Oh yeah, I mean. Inert makes sense, but yeah, but that's more. Like, I'm thinking that's more like gas. It, it, well, you can have an inert substance too. Um, yeah, pe- people much smarter than us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, I'm, like, I, I'm, I'm assuming like but, I that, mean, yeah, that no, material that when right. you using it in the water, like you don't get decomposition of the material where it leaches over into the, to right. the water table. Right. Like it doesn't dissolve or uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. What it's you're a saying. stable. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is you know. My thing, my, my wonder is, you know, are we going to start seeing, you know, cots or commercial off-the-shelf printers, you know, coming from small-name manufacturers that have built-in fire extinguisher systems on board if they're capable of printing these higher-end filaments? I mean, yeah, if, if, the, if the bamboo can detect spaghetti, then it can shoot out some fire extinguisher or whatever. It detect fire and flame. Yeah, it's like, boom. And that system is, is basically... A suppression system is yeah. basically something that goes with anything that's able to be uh, start a fire. Yeah. So, like most of your food trucks, yeah, they have, have to have that to have yeah. with fire extinguishers yeah. and like auto sensors yeah. and stuff like that. So, a quick and easy one. I mean, a lot of people have built the lax enclosure table with mm-hmm. their engines mm-hmm. and things like that. A quick one is like you have, it's it's like this. Um, think about it as like a. A su- it's a suppressant, but it, you mount it in the top of the the mm-hmm. enclosure, and once the enclosure reaches a certain temperature, it'll break away its support and it'll fall and, and um, it'll suffocate the fire. Like the grenade yeah. thing that they saw so, on fires. Yeah. So I would even go. But, but you mount it in there so that the temperature hits it, it drops onto on it. So it just sense. it's I in mean, the enclosure. I would even go a step further. I would use some of the technology we use in server rooms. As yeah, long no, as it's inside too. the enclosure, and like you said, it. It uh, suffocates the. Yeah, it's, it, it dissipates sucks all the, the oxygen. Out. Yeah, it's just on nitrogen. Yeah, that yeah. actually makes a lot of sense. If yeah. you take away the oxygen from the fire, yeah. I mean, I mean maybe not halon, but you know, yeah. some yeah. some type of. Well, any, any inert gas. CO CO yeah. two or, or yeah. something. Yeah, any, any inert gas yeah. like shielding gases and stuff like Powder that. Powder base, so like it's not difficult to clean up. Yeah. yeah. Foam, if you really want to get fancy. Yeah. Um, you know, even though the foam, foam is, is very caustic, <laughs> yeah. uh, foam will also destroy your printer. So if the foam yeah. cannon goes off, you're done. Well, I, mean, um, I guess it depends that's on you're protecting yourself. And ask, ask the Air Force what happens when one of their foam things goes off inside of a, a hangar and they have to refurbish the entire airplane. Hey, oh, no. Um, because it's, it's, it's caustic and it actually will eat stainless steel. I'm going to tell you what's, what's funny <laughs> is that, and of course now a, 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 a jet is using fuel that's like, you know, like highly, highly flammable. Yeah. You yeah. Know. But <laughs> a funny story, I worked at, at, a, at a manufacturer and we had a, a mix room and we had a uh, arc because uh, they were using the wrong type of hose mm-hmm. and that ho- the particular hose you know it was you know it was uh, susceptible to a static uh, discharge oh, no. oh boy so they went to hook it up and it it uh oh. they had a tote that they were doing a, a, a chain so they were they were cleaning out the uh, tank okay so it had a charge, it sparked, and we had these uh, <clears throat> containers had like a top on it where you like would uh, fasten it. Yeah. It blew the top about 40 feet oh, in the, to the ceiling because, you know, that yeah. mixed room. Uh, uh, foam system went off. So when we finally got back in the building, <laughs> oh, no. the foam was probably about 15 foot high. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that it was like was no joke. if you've seen the parties they have over in Europe with the bubble place, this, this <laughs> yeah. was just like that. Yeah, that stuff stinks. <laughs> and then you just like, all right, turn on the. And radio. we found out later that it was the wrong type of phone for alcohol fire. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. That's, oh. When, that's when you can no. use the ones from fire from uh, <laughs> Get a lid on fire. Yeah. That's when the ones you use from like the fire from like the like inside hangar bays and stuff like that. That uh, stuff will not just you know put your fire out, but it'll also eat your equipment. Um, and that that's why they do not typically want to use anything like that yeah. around delicate equipment. Yeah. Tip, yeah. Typically, they want to do what we were talking about before. Yeah. Get rid of the oxygen. To, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. also one that happened a lot of dudes out there with push brooms going to push all that stuff out of the hangar bay. Man. Um, <laughs> bunch of bad guys. <laughs> bunch of guys who are now actively pissed off. Yeah. But, you know, or, it's the, or the dude who accidentally bumped the, the, the button and it set the entire place off. Yeah, you got those. And He's then the one that has to clean it, though. Then by himself. The, then the platoon, platoon lead, like, why? Yeah, that's usually the question. Why happens. you? Why, why? why you and why now? What why is, us? What have you done this time? Yeah. <laughs> There's no I'm sorry after that. It's now you're covered in foam and you can't get away from it. Will you? Yeah. But... And the thing is, is you know, none of that should persuade anybody from trying in advanced filaments if you have the ability. No, to yeah, I mean, like I'm saying, like the, if you if you can master these things we're talking about, the first layer, the the print bed, the temperature, smart tower, whatever, uh, calibration on the flow rates and things like that, I mean, there's no limit. Like I was saying earlier, polycarbonate, is, bulletproof glass is polycarbonate. Like, yeah. there's so many applications you can use with just one of these mm. industrial materials. Like honestly, if you're making something that has movement, um, is you know in any type of collision, takes any type of impact, is outside in the heat, mm. you should probably probably go in these higher filaments. So we right. so basically we're saying when it's outside, not only the heat but the UV rays, yeah. which oh, which yeah. attacks the oh yeah uh, e- even ABS and even some of the more. Like, I don't know if anybody gardens, but if you have any of those materials that I think they're polycarbonate, mm-hmm. that even those, mm-hmm. if you leave them out after a certain amount of seasons, that they become brittle. And no, they no, no. Apart. That, yeah. that, that's true. I mean, my, my brother has Pet G um, uh, prints for the garden where they labeled his, her hostas, and they put them in there, and they, they got really brittle on, the, on those stands. And also, he's got a hose guide so it doesn't go into the, the hose doesn't go into the garden. You hook mm-hmm. it on the side. Just it's just a, a kind of like it looks like a pulley. Mm-hmm. Just spins a lot when you pull it. That whole top broke off. Yeah. After a while, and it wasn't just from the weight. It yeah. was because it's been sitting for so long. I and the thing is, you start moving, and also you move, start moving to filaments that once you get your advanced stuff, you start moving to the filaments that are food safe. Yeah. And so that you can use for more advanced projects. Well, see, they, 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 these like these filaments have the properties that we want, and right. that's, that's right. the reason why we're trying to get there. But it's not easy to. To print. <laughs> no, no. Has no. has anybody printed uh, food safe filament and then microwaved it to see what the effects on it is? Has that been done yet? I'm not okay. putting it, if you put it in your microwave. I won't say like microwave safe. It shouldn't it be once oh, you yeah. once it's stable. How do they make microwave safe? There's an entire there's an entire roll of microwave safe filament. Man, down you done, you're, you're going down a whole nother rabbit hole right I'm just there, curious, man. like how, <laughs> how, do, how, do, how do, do they like they they using the same type of plastic that's food what, safe? Right. Well, how are they making a microwave safe? That's true be because that's, that's what, but that's what we're talking about heat resistant as well. I mean, honestly, it's it's you need to do testing. How do you how are you yeah. supposed to do yeah. that? You have to run it through the system. I mean, sorry for I'm just curious. Left turn. I, yeah, I just. How, but it, how do they it do makes it? sense. It, it, it really is a curiosity Somebody thing. Somebody Googled that. <laughs> yeah. And let us know. We're watching How It's Made four hours yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, you, that, like that. I'll tell you, when you bring up How It's Made, I hear the song. Oh, my, my God. Ding, ding, I can ding. hear it. I can hear it right now. I mean, it, to me, like, that's that's the fascinating part <laughs> about the 3D printing. You know, like, uh, of course, I'm still in my infancy of, of 3D printing, but um, part of it is life happens. Part of it is is I'm one of those people that... Uh, Squirrel. You know, yeah, squirrel too, but I also get stuck on one thing too, you know, well, why, Hyper. why, why, why this, why this, why this, why mm-hmm. this, uh, maybe not so much hyper-focus as to, I don't understand, Yeah. why yeah. does it do this? Say it again. <laughs> no, that's, know, that, that's honestly why I, st- I, like, I, I get these weird filaments and try it, because I think it's pretty, pretty interesting. I, I think you get Mitch, these weird it, filaments to hold it over our head, so now you have something you can do more than we can, no, I still haven't done the TPU thing yet. Oh, I saw the TPU fair. roll you gave me sent over the corner. Yeah, no, be careful with that. <laughs> that you need, to, yeah, put it in the board. You, you know what? I think the challenge mm. should be. <laughs> okay, you you you've done That's some spaghetti right there. You've done multiple filaments, but how how about or how do we feel about? All right, I've done multiple filaments. Now, can I make 
components and put these components together. Well, yeah, so nice. 3D print them and they're dimensionally able from the first print. Tolerances are, are close enough, yeah. To no, be, that's the thing. No, that's, so that's when you don't run a .6 nozzle like I have on most of my stuff. <laughs> well, no, no. So, so that you you raise a good point. I mean, you have a bigger nozzle. You can only only helps you with your layer adhesion. So, right. like, if, if you're, you're just gonna lose, it's gonna be very, very, like thick layer lines. You know, depending on how big you go. But, but it'll be better. It'll be better structurally. It'll probably work. But yeah. dimensionally, even yeah. with uh that six that point uh, right. zero was it point zero six or point six. You get point no, it's point, point it's zero point, six. No, 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 it's point six. It's point six. Yeah, it's point, six. Oh, point six. So if it's point six, then I should have dimensional accuracy over each part that I print with point six. Well, the thing yeah. is, is, some I, dimensional accuracy. I printed, I printed um uh some puzzles, not the point. There's stuff on the table. Yeah. Um, this weekend for my nephew for his birthday. Yeah. And they all put together, clamped together. Awesome. Um, That's awesome. So you know, made a little dinosaur and an owl. owl. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's pretty. I, I get him those. I probably print him that type of stuff because. You know, he he does have autism, and you know we try to make sure that he gets he has his little toys he likes and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So we try to keep him interested. Um, so that's another thing. It's like you know, and you know, I think we'll end it here. I think we've gotten to that point. Is you know, if you are going to print something, you know, make sure you take into account who you're printing it for. Mm-hmm. Um, if you you know, if you can get kids in, into three D printing, do it. Um, if you can get kids with special needs into three D printing, make sure they're safe around it, and I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's something that you don't they don't they don't get to see every day. Um, I know every time I print him something, he loves it. Um, you know, bugs. Yeah, he won't puzzles. probably sit there for the for the print, but he'll watch the start. Oh no, then, he would. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he would, probably would stay there the entire time. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Believe me, we we have. We, I mean, he always he's you know he, if especially if it's anything that deals with Buzz Lightyear, time lapse, or time lapse if it's so. anything that deals with Thomas the Train. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny that you know you relive some of your childhood cartoons through watching you know nieces, nephews, and kids and stuff like that. You know, but the thing is, is you know make sure everybody's incorporated in it and make sure everybody's having fun with it. Make sure you're having fun with it first and foremost. You know, we definitely don't ever want to persuade you from not doing something or trying something. You know, just making sure you're informed. Um, you know, but you know from my side, you know we're almost at you know almost two thousand all time downloads. Um, we're like right on the cusp, but I think we're about a hundred away. Mm-hmm. Um, and or less than 100, I think now. Um, but you know, I just want to say thank you. You know, thank you to every single person who tunes in, you know, every week or every other week, depending on what our schedule looks like. Um, we are going to South Tech, you know, at the end of the month, which is in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, we'll be up there for, for that event. We will be doing, um, kind of a daily, um, you know, kind of rundown about, you know, what, what happened up there. You know, it's an advanced manufacturing show, so we're hoping to see some some cool things, you know, so that we can bring back to you, you know, so we can have a little bit of fun with it. Um, you know, so, but, you know, first and foremost, thank you. We appreciate you. Um, if you ever need anything from us, you let us know. Um, you know, it, it, just send us, you know, anything you have questions on, we'll take a look at it. We'll help you out no matter the time zone. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you, even though if you're asleep, you know, we'll get back to you. You know, if you need to have a set up a call with us, please let us know. We'll figure out something like a, a, a team's call or, or something like that. Uh, go take a look at Printed Heritage. Um, go take a look at the blog, you know, the, the, the Volcanar blog. I am going to be redoing the Volcanar website eventually, so it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, it won't be as as clunky. Um, it won't be as Google. Um, but, you know, we'll get that around to it. But I just want to say thank you, and uh, y'all have a good night. I'm going to turn y'all over to So, like I said, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be me if I didn't... Uh throw a curveball. So what does everybody think about the new Raspberry Pi 5? I haven't played with it yet. Yeah, listen. I don't play I with it. And they actually yeah, they made it. enough now that you can get them. Oh, really? But you can only get them, you get them in the middle of this month. Oh, okay. They so run about, about 80 like, bucks. 8 bucks? 80. Oh, 80. I thought it was 8. And you can overclock them, I think, to 3 point something gig. How now, many gigs do they have each? Uh... Well, excuse me, not gig- gigahertz. I think you can overclock them now. Though. Okay. Okay. But they probably have a two, four, gigahertz. and an eight. I bet. Uh, yeah, probably they, even more. Well, than no, that. it's two versions. The one that's uh forty and the one that's eighty. Oh, that's not bad. All right, we, I'm gonna have to look at it. Yeah, later. the forty. Yeah. Yeah. the forty was a little not I'm, as. I need me one for my home automation. But but the eighty, <laughs> the one that's eighty bucks is supposed to be pretty dang on sweet. I, I want to build Stick like yeah. the thing is, is, I hate to jump on your little, you know, rabbit hole here, <laughs> squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm trying to let y'all go. Damn it, we can jump back to the thing. 
<laughs> is 3D printing a, 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 a server rack enclosure to hold Raspberry Pis. Yeah. You can make an entire server rack of Raspberry Pis. You can. You yeah. can put it on the demo if you wanted to. Yeah, yep. exactly. I got, we got plenty of that line around. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we appreciate all you guys listening. We appreciate um, the support. Uh, uh, we're pretty sure, we're confident that we're going to be at over 2,000 uh, downloads before the end of this month. We're, we're confident in our followers, and we know you guys are going to support us. Uh, and uh, we, like I said, each each time I, I try to challenge you, you guys, um, send us some of the things that you're printing or send us some of the things that you're trying. What what filaments are you using? Uh, what 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 uh, type of printers are you using? What bed liners are you using? Um, what STLs are you using? What's, what's your go-to site? Send, send us some stuff. Uh, just comment down below, and we'll uh, look at the comments and yep. respond next week. If you find a good, pr- a fun printer to use, freaking let us know. We'll take a look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like <clears throat> like these guys both say, you know, echo them every time. Thank you. Um, uh, nice to have some listeners. Nice to have some people kind of tuning in and, and, and getting some of this knowledge. I mean, to be honest with you, the knowledge is out there. We just got to kind of go take it and grab it, and we're just trying to get it out to everybody else as well, kind of spread the word. So, uh, I mean, if, if you've ever had any advanced filaments or any questions about going to an advanced filament, I mean, it is kind of scary at first because you're you're worried. I mean, we did kind of have some doom and gloom where we talk about fires and things like that, but at the end of the day, you're printing them just because you want your functional print to be the best functional print. And I mean, that's why we do all the tinkering is because we want it to be the best possible. We want all the features and things like that. So um, if you have any ideas or any questions, any anything you're concerned about with printing these things, just, you know, shoot us a shoot us an email. Um, let us know. And I mean, we could do a, we could do an episode on just that if you yeah. want. So. And we, we will be in Greenville. So if yep. you guys yep. want to meet up, me and Nick will be there uh, mm-hmm. this 27th, month. 27th, 28th and 29th. So just let us know. And we can meet up somewhere and maybe do a meet and greet with you guys. Yeah. yeah. That or you have any ideas of uh, 3D print stores up that way, let us know. We'll swing on in and kind of, you know, take a gander. Yeah. The Micro Center, maybe. No, yeah. no, 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 no. 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 Oh, no. probably wrong, 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 wrong side. Wrong way. Right. Wrong hey, way. But yeah. Micro Center is selling the Raspberry Pi 5. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the website I'm going to go to first then. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and guys. And also, there's some with bamboo. Like and you can, pre- you can pre-order right now. Okay. I'm going to go look at it. <laughs> yeah, there's some with bamboo lab, too. You're a good salesman. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, hey Raspberry. Stay care. All right. That's all for this episode of Tech at Lunch. Thanks for tuning in and joining us for this tech-filled lunch break. We hope you enjoyed the show, and don't forget to subscribe on all channels. And also, you can find us on YouTube under Volcanar Technology Solutions. And join us for our next episode, which gets published every Wednesday at 8 a.m. All right, y'all. Have a good one. See you later.